Hold the roll. So, uh, give me a good loud set, Dave. Yeah. Stand by. Okay, John. There's storyboards. Okay, camera set. Jack. Jack. And action. It's from Carlisle. Which we spell with an S. Sweet Bianca. <laughs> you good? Good, good, good. good. Yeah. OK, great. Good action. When we wrap production on Breaking Dawn, we will have completed five movies in three years and three months. I'm so honored to have been a part of this phenomenon. It's kind of amazing. There's some really great people, lots of really great actors. It's a family that is very unique. I've made so many friends that I truly believe are going to last a lifetime. <laughs> what your imagination leaped off the page when you were reading the book is now coming to a tangible reality when you're watching from Bill Condon's perspective. In action! You're going to see the wedding. With all of the decor and the dress and the costuming. It's magical. It's absolutely magical. It's from the plates to the music. I've sort of been ramping up to do that scene for like three years, so I was just going out of my mind. We're here in Rio de Janeiro. Our first day of shooting, day one of 101 days. Great. That's it. Pull That's it. We're moving up the hill. Everybody grab something to carry. We went to Rio in the rainy season. We do stuff like that. I don't know. This is a very unique situation. Day three of shooting. So we're not staying in Rio? Just passing through. It's the first day in Canada. This is painful. You finally get to see Jacob take the leadership role that he's always been destined to. He has to become a man and, you know, do the right thing. I want them safe, and I want this over. You're going to see the pregnancy. I was thinking Renesmee. The delivery. I mean, some of it was gross. <laughs> Being honest, there were moments where I couldn't keep a straight face, at least. Stay focused. Good. <laughs> There's a nostalgic aspect to it, I think, for all of us. It's truly been amazing. Yeah, I think I will miss it a bit. <laughs> Keep it clear, guys. And set. On Breaking Dawn, we were really blessed. A lot of great directors came forward who were interested in the material and the challenge of making two movies at once. So, you know, we had a different director every time, so it's always kind of interesting to come back. Starting with Catherine Hardwick, to Chris Weitz, to David Slade, to Bill Condon. Part of what was interesting to me is that each of those previous films is very different one to the other. And each director's had a completely different approach to those movies, you know? So it is a chance to put your mark on it. I'd like to introduce everybody to our fearless leader, Mr. Bill Condon, at the end. Thank you, Thank you. Bill Condon, somebody that we had approached on both New Moon and Eclipse. I'd heard about them as some of the other movies had been happening, and the timing was never right. Lo and behold, when we went out to start looking for Breaking Dawn, he said, I'm interested. An 8.30 crew call. That was what we had done, I think, today. And that was a real excitement for all of us. He came in, and, and he said something in his meeting with Stephanie and all of us that I always remember. He said, I guess I've imprinted on the world of Twilight, and it was like, Perfect. You know, the fact that he kind of used that metaphor for his own affection for the series. Oh, great. Come great. the camera this way. Really. It's those big decisions you have to make about how to tell a story cinematically. I mean, he's had a very, very different story to work with. When a lot of people could have, like, balked at the subject matter, he kind of embraced it. And also, like the idea of you know, embracing the horror aspects of it, which is quite bold. Rose, no. Let the morphine spread. There's no time. He's dying. Cut. OK. Cut. Bill has come from a world of which he's touched on a lot of variations of different genres. He is a bit of a genre junkie. I mean, he loves fantasy. He, early in his career, wrote genre films. I started with these really strange, goofy horror movies, Strange Behavior and Strange Invaders. 
And he's a visual director. I mean, if you really think of Dream Girls and you know the, the world of kind of stage and musical, it's a visual medium itself. Just close up that gap a little, right? Good. It's a joy because very rarely do you ever have a chance where a director is able to comprehend the grander scheme and not just sectionalize it. Um, Bill does look at everything. He looks at the grand canvas and he's able to understand where all the palette is and the various colors and how you execute those elements. The idea of ling that little linger you did, like holding back to the last look at him, that was excellent. I think you could do a little more of that, you know? His talents are very obvious for why they would make sense for this movie. He has pulled performances out of people that have never acted before and is able to articulate the sophisticated themes of Breaking Dawn. There are big challenges, you know, because it's about taking something that's written as a fantasy and actually bringing the movie goer along to the degree that they believe in it. I mean, there's something clever about the fact that he's actually thought it to make a joke to, to ease the mood. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? So it's like looking at each other and sharing that laugh, I think, is worth it. You're dealing with a well-known book, so you have to be very sure when you're inventing something that it fits into the fabric of what's already been created. I think everyone is very, very intent on making sure that the movies don't betray what those books are. And that was very important to me, and it was to everybody on the film. This is a huge book and that created its own challenges. So it was sort of mind-blowing to have the author right there, handy and able to weigh in on those things. Working with Bill has been great. He's very open with what he's doing. I, I've never worked with a director who will let you see rough cuts put together. I read the book and I was really turned on by it. So much of these other movies have been the setup for what happens here. In the course of one movie, Bella gets married, she has sex for the first time, she gets pregnant, she gives birth, she dies, and she's reborn. That's just the first movie, you know? So the whole movie is a third act. And that was really fun. It felt very satisfying. For the first time, I'm producing the movie as well as being the writer of the source material. It's been a real natural progression in terms of her involvement. Each movie has been a real step forward in terms of kind of how collaboratively she's been involved in the making of the film. She's tried to fire me. How many times have you tried so to every, fire me? Every day After movie. every movie, she tries to fire me. It is not following the rules. Really, the producer title hasn't changed much. I was really involved, particularly with New Moon and Eclipse. Whenever we have questions about mythology, whether she was physically there or not, we were calling her, you know, and, and emailing her, and, and she's looking at all the footage, too. So now she's just there in the moment. It is different having to worry so much about the weather and, like, are we going to be able to shoot tomorrow? That's a, that's a new experience. <laughs> Melissa really understands Stephanie's world. She has a great relationship with Stephanie. It's a strong, kind of unified partnership. She has done an amazing job synthesizing these books into movies, and we've never had to waver from her as a screenwriter from the very first book. She's carried us all the way through. It was so good to have Melissa there who knew the challenges of adapting Twilight to the screen so intimately. It's not too late to change your mind. Why, are you having second thoughts? I've been waiting a century to marry you, Miss Swan. You know, it's it's always a little bit dicey when a director is a writer-director. And, and Bill Condon, an Academy Award-winning writer, who I had always admired, he was one of the best director collaborations I've, I've ever had. We would just spend all this time batting it out. She'd write, we'd talk, and we really didn't then show it to anybody until we really had a draft that we thought held together dramatically. He knew how to get to the heart of the story. Melissa knows this world. She knows the voices of these characters. You know, it was great. I really loved it because it was just a very easy and good collaboration. I think uh, we have to leave at 345, right? Something like that. Yeah. 330. 3.30. So we should leave at 2.30 then. Most scripts are, on average, run between 100 and 120 pages. And in this particular case, Breaking Down 1 and 2, you know, combined is about 250 pages. The easiest way to tackle it is we're shooting one long movie and we're shooting out of sequence at times. You could be into the end of the movie in the first three weeks of a 20-week schedule. And a director's comfort level has to be in place in order to achieve that on every level. We would film a scene from the beginning of the first movie in the morning. We'd have lunch and then film a scene from the end of the second movie. It's just, it's crazy. And it becomes a complicated chess game, which has to be resolved by a director who is doing his homework as best he can based on 250 pages of script. The nuances of it for the actors and Bill are that 
they each have to create their own emotional journeys for two separate movies. If you're shooting part one, you gotta completely ignore anything that you've already done in part two because it hasn't happened yet. It was all about prepping my script and everything. I've got post-it notes and sticky notes and different color markers, and I can look back and pull a tab, and it says this is what's happened, this is what happens after, and this is what's happening now. Bella, are you okay? It was difficult, but we had Bill Condon there with us, you know, to help us along the way. We had Stephanie. The idea that we were going to be doing this for half a year did seem a little overwhelming, but I think it was right because it is one story, you know? It is truly not two movies. It's a long story that's cut in half. L'amore ci mantiene giovane. Edward and Bella are to be married. Cut. Hey, cut. Cut, cut. <laughs>